Hey, hon. Hi, hon. Hi, we everyone. We meet again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for coming, you guys. <laughs> Can you hear me? How yes. Okay, cool. I feel like we're on one of those, like, coffee talk shows with, like, the mugs, you know? <laughs> and we just, like, pensively, like, take sips of our coffee. Like, in it's between. vodka. Yeah. <laughs> we're, like, unconscious in five minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Brian and I have been friends since 2011, and the book just joined that? us in 2012. Yeah, just that. Wow. It feels like longer because we talk feels on the longer. phone all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, but yes, the book joined us in 2012, so it's been writing dirty for three years, <laughs> and we're really excited it's in the world, um, finally. But it almost was a different book. I remember when you were pitching it, the working title was how to be a 20-something. Yes, wow. And um, I really like the story of how it became I'm Special, so I want you to talk about that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so basically I lied to my publishers, which <laughs> I don't recommend anyone really doing if they want to sell a book. But uh, the book that I sold them was like this like Urban Outfitters, like how to be a 20-something, like listicle, like how to do it. And it was like definitely going to be sold like all over Urban Outfitters for sure. And then I, so, so I sold that version like to my shock, and then I came to Simon & Schuster, and they were like, you know, we have a, a good title for this, and I'm like, well, what is it? They're like, we want to call it I'm Special, and I'm like, funny you say that, Mike, my editor, because I am special, and not in the way that you think, and I've been, I have cerebral palsy, and I wasn't on the DL about it. Like, I was not talking about it with anyone, and uh, I knew that if I got this book deal, I couldn't write a book about my life without including this huge part of it, so when Mike said that title, I was like, okay, this is too perfect, blah, blah, blah. Then I told him that I wanted to write a book about having cerebral palsy, which, like, he loved. Oh, my God, they were, they were like, obsessed. So then, um, so then it kind of just took off from there, and then it became this entirely different book. Still, like, in spirit, what I sold, I think, but, like, with an extra added gimp depth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think that... It started out with a very mass appeal, and it still has that, but you're now also speaking to a niche audience that is really underrepresented. Um, yeah, there's like 10 gay guys with CP, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope they bought my fucking book. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, do you, like, what do you want them to take away from it? Because they've probably never seen anything like your story. Um, what do I want gay disabled people to take away from it? I, I want them to feel represented for the first time, because I mean, there was nothing. I think there was someone with, I, we all know the guy in Breaking, ba Breaking Bad SCP, but he's straight and now a DJ, so good luck. <laughs> and <laughs> he's like, era, era, like honey, I don't, don't understand. And then there was one, <laughs> there was someone on Facts of Life, like Cousin Jerry, who had CP, <laughs> if you guys remember. And <laughs> I mean, I do, because they're literally like, CP, who has it? And it's like, Cousin Jerry. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's me. <laughs> I'm Cousin Jerry. Um, so basically, I just hope that they can kind of see this, and I hope it just normalizes um, this group of people that has never been really represented, and it shows just how specific the experience it is, but also how universal the struggles of growing up gay and disabled were. Like, you know, you may not have, you know, drooled on someone during art class in fourth grade, but something equally as humiliating might have happened, and so, you know... Everyone's a little bit of a gay gimp, <laughs> deep, deep down. Honey, come on, don't be shy. Uh, yeah, so I, I just hope that happens. <laughs> um, so I feel like once you decided to go in this direction with your book, that is maybe when you told me that you had CP and a couple other friends. Yeah, so I, I really didn't tell know you. for like two years. And I was tying Ryan's Lies, shoes. secrets. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... <laughs> uh, I, was, I was doing a lot of things for Ryan that I would never do for other friends or even family. Like, <laughs> his fly was falling down one day at my birthday party and I was like, oh, you just need to like take a rubber band and tie it through the fly and then loop it around your your button and he's like can you do it <laughs> and I was like sure so I <laughs> got down on my knees and like got to know Ryan's groin and yeah. Yeah. it was funny to me that you were comfortable with me doing that with no explanation <laughs> no none <laughs> but, <laughs> not, but not enough so to talk about CP so I'm just wondering um what you were kind of afraid of in, in terms of 
telling people that were close to you? You know, it's so funny because every fear you have really is irrational. Like, to me, I don't know. It's like I could literally write about my sex life. I could literally write about, like, anal sex or, like, some guy who, like, you know, came in my face and left and, like, have no shame in that. You know what I mean? Like, no shame whatsoever. But then, like, God forbid I mention the word cerebral palsy and it's like, ah! Like I'm not no, I can't do it. I mean, it just makes no sense. On in one uh, in one aspect, I was so honest, and then on the other, I was hiding this like deep shameful secret that no one gives a fuck about. But that's the thing. It's like the things you care about the most, no one cares about. No one cares about things more than you do. It's all in your head. Like when you're like when you're worried about, oh no, did I say something embarrassing the other night? Like chances are, no one fucking noticed, and like you freaking out about it makes you the freak. Like then now you're being a freak. <laughs> You know what I mean? You weren't a freak before, but now you're a fucking freak. So, like, I don't really know why. I think because I was just so ashamed. With cerebral, cerebral palsy was just, like, a dirty word to me because I just, I didn't, I didn't know a lot about it. I didn't really relate to it because I had a, I had a mild case. Like, having CP, your cases go, can go from mild to wild, honey. I mean, like, literally, you can be, like, like very funksh, like me, and you can also just be like in a wheelchair and like not be able to speak and have like a feeding like person, like a person who feeds you. And um, so I just never identified with it. So I think that's really just kind of what the shame kind of came from was just me wanting to just get rid of it. Also being gay and having CP was not chic, not chic. No, it was very rude. I remember like, you know, coming to Ryan Philippi in the shower, like cruel intentions being like, really, I'm gay, really? <laughs> on top of everything <laughs> that's great thanks a lot <laughs> thanks a lot god or whoever <laughs> nice fun prank you're pulling me uh so so yeah it was just also i had a lot of issues with with my sexuality and my disability and where those intersected and feeling desirable and all that stuff so yep just a lot of garden variety shame <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you write about this in the book, and I remember you telling me about it, and it's like one of the funniest coming out stories I've ever heard. Uh, maybe you want to tell it? Uh, yeah, I'll tell And then it. I have a follow-up question once you tell the story. So coming out to me actually was NBD. Coming out of the, like, the disabled closet was much, much harder. But like being gay was like, okay, this is like fun. I mean, it was like annoying. Obviously, I came to Ryan Philippi and I was annoyed. But then after three hours of like hiding like gay porn search engines on my computer... I was like, okay, I'm exhausted, and it's time for mama to come out. So, um, and my parents didn't care. They were like, you're gay anyways, what's for dinner? You know what I mean? It was just like not, they were like, don't be such a drama queen. Like, we don't give a fuck. So, anyway, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this whole gay thing and have an excuse to throw a party. So, I decided to tell all my friends by filming a video. <laughs> and it was with my best friend, Katie. And we were, like, slow dancing to, like, Shaw Day, and she goes in for a kiss, and I'm like, no, Katie, step away. And she's like, what's wrong, Ryan? I like you, and I thought you liked me, too. And I'm like, I do like you. It's just not that easy. And then she was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I'll tell you what's wrong. Actually, I'll tell you what's right. <laughs> I'm gay, bitches. And I turned to the camera. It was VV dramatic. And then everyone that I invited over to my house to watch this video, well, first of all, I texted all my friends, and I was like, come over to my house. On Saturday, for a secret, will they change all our lives forever? <laughs> and, and so they did. And they were like, and I decorated it. I went to Spencer's Gifts and got like penis pasta and like all this like stuff, you know, all this garbage, like fucking gag gift stuff. And I put up posters of Morrissey and Mar. And they were like, this is really weird. Like, I don't know what secret he could be like wanting to reveal to us. And then they, they saw the video and then we all rejoiced and like, you know, danced to like moving units or Rob Kylie or whatever the fuck. And it was, it was really, it was a joyous uh, coming out process. And then, you know, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> so you didn't celebrate coming out about CP, to my memory. Did you? Well, no, I wrote a post about it. And then I quietly <laughs> celebrated in my bedroom when I posted publish, you know. <laughs> but no, there was no, I mean, well, also like this book. I mean, this is a celebration of CP, I feel like. You know what I mean? Like right here with all of you. This is my CP coming out party. Um, but you know, it wasn't, it, it, it was, this has been more joyous to me than coming out of the sexuality closet. This means more to me, I think, because I just don't think my issues of being gay, I only hated being gay for like four years and then I was like totally DTF with being gay. And I think I've hated being, having CP for like 28 years. So the self-hatred is like much higher, I think. Yeah. Where do you think it started? Like, do you think it started with 
writing about it and sort of being able to articulate how you felt about it? Um, like, at what point were you like, I love CP? <laughs> I'm like, I want to marry it. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Limping down the aisle together. Need oxygen tanks. Um, no. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think when I wrote that post for Thought Catalog coming out of the Disabled Closet, that's, and I had written the book by then, and it was, the book was already available for pre-order. And everyone would ask me, what's this book about? And I'd be like, I don't know, babe. Like, just read it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> nervously, like, you know, fidgeting. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just write about my, my disability. And so I wrote that post. And then immediately, it was like overnight transformation. I just, I released it into the world and was just like, you know, young, wild, and free with my CP. And it, it really did change the way I live my life. And since that post, I think I published it in January, my life has just been so amazing in ways that I could not expect. It, when you start being honest about who you are 100%, the world just opens up to you in such an exciting, cool way. And then you can realize you can go after everything that you want because you have nothing to hide. There's no shame. There's, no, there's nothing. There's nothing holding you back. You got to get it, girl. You got to get what's <laughs> yours. I feel like you're speaking into my soul. Um, <laughs> were, there, were you surprised by the reaction to that post and like subsequent... No. Talks about your book? Well, I was surprised because, you know, Jim Parsons read it and, like, wanted to option the book. That was surprising. And so that happened. But, uh, you know, the, the outpouring of support was, uh, was so incredible. I mean, listen, disability is troll-proof. Like, I <laughs> dare you to be like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Like, go die in a fire, you gimp. Like, no one's going to, like, no one's going to say that. Like, literally, the internet has to be nice. It's like the one area where they're, and it's like, like literally they want to go on their keyboard and be like, fuck this motherfucker. And they're like, oh, CP, shit. <laughs> All right, well, congratulations. Anyways, you know what I mean? Like you just can't, the rage can't, the rage against the machine can't be focused towards CP. It's, it's definitely troll proof. So it was like, it was really great to see everyone kind of like, you know, support me and give me congratulations. And it just proved to me that what I already knew intellectually that like no one gave a fuck and I gave something so much power. Like, I, CP should have been, like, a little ant on the ground, but instead I, like, made it into Godzilla. And, like, it just should never have been Godzilla. It should have always been an ant. And, uh, you know, it just proved that that was all just in my head, you know? It was, and that's so annoying to think that you wasted so much time thinking, making such a big deal out of something that no one gave a shit about. But, you know, I mean, whatever. The point is that I'm doing it now. So it's exciting. Uh, so I know you started going to the gym and stuff like that after you accepted that you had CP. Yes. Um, what are you saying? You're saying I look great? <laughs> you look fabulous. You're I look great? <laughs> um, <laughs> but have you made... So I, I'm figuring that the reason you weren't going to the gym before is because you kind of felt like you physically couldn't do anything, so why bother? Yeah. How do you know? Yeah. That's I mean, we've talked about this. That's oh, how I know. Oh, <laughs> My well, reader. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> what? that's some scoop stuff. I don't know how you found that out. She's like, bitch, we I'm talked about intuitive. it last week. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so have you made any other changes, um, either physically or emotionally, since you've been... <laughs> well, I've been a lot healthier accepting. in general, I think. Well, when you work out, it's interesting with working out. Because when you're a writer, you never talk to your body. Like, your body is not a part of who you are. It's all up here, honey. You're at your computer. You're typing, blah, blah, blah. Your body is just, like, this inconvenience that takes you from point A to point B. When you start working out, you start to, like, actually, like, start to, like, text your body and be like, hey, babe, what's up? Like, what are you doing here? And you start to, like, go out for, like, yogurt at yogurt land and, like, start to, like, hang out. And then you just, like, start to kind of see yourself as, like, a whole thing mind, body, and soul. And you start to just, when you start working out every day, you just, you just kind of view your body as like this like vessel that you need to protect. And so you start to make healthier choices. It's just like, you're just like, no, I don't want to eat like, you know, fucking, you know, funnel cake at the fair. Because when I do that, I want to die. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so it's, it's, uh, it's been kind of just this um, domino effect with working out. It's just affected all areas of my life in, I think, a positive way. And it also makes me not do drugs, which is positive, you know, because you just don't want to do drugs when you like yourself. <laughs> um, I, I have one more question, and then we'll open it up to you guys. Uh, if you were still writing this book and it wasn't done until today, uh -huh. what would you change about the conclusions, if anything? You know, that's actually a really good question. I Thank you. I... <laughs> So, <laughs> Connie Chung over here, Diane Sawyer, 
getting getting grilled like a Jill, George Foreman grill over here. Uh, no, it's uh, you know it's so funny because I was going through last edits, copy edits when I, when I wrote that post for Thought Catalog, and my life really started to change. I mean, really. And I read this book now, and I'm like, oh, this is like still me hating myself. Like I read like being gay is gay and all this stuff and the 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 love chapter, like love quote unquote lol. Um, <laughs> You know, and I'm like, this is so, this is so dark. This is so sad. And I'm like, maybe I should like write a fucking thing that's like, it got better. Like really, like I'm, I'm cool now. Everything's cool. You can go home. Nothing to see here. But then I realized that this book represents such a specific time in my life that was so full of pain and hardship and self-loathing. And I feel like to kind of just put this like ending at the end that's just like, anyways, babe, it all worked out. I got a boyfriend. I'm at the gym. Everything's great. Would have been kind of like, would have just been kind of like phony baloney and lame. So I just didn't, I just didn't, I didn't want to fuck with it. I think it kind of exists. It, to me, it just, it represents such a specific time. And, you know, everything that happens after that, well, we'll have to wait for book two. <laughs> like a time capsule. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, I do feel sad for the person who wrote this book. <laughs> like, I'm just like, wow, Ryan, you were, you were, yeah, it's very <laughs> sad. Anyways, um, yeah, but hopefully, People laugh and it's in, you know makes people feel hopeful and all that stuff. Yeah. Does anyone have questions? Hi, how's it going? Uh, I was just curious, what what is the process of optioning the book look like? Did you like get a call from Jim or like how did that go down? Well, and what you know, was it, your reaction when you found out? Well, it was I mean it was like crazy. Like I woke up and they were like Jim Parsons wants to set a meeting with you and I was like excuse me, eh? but um, I mean it's different for everybody like. My process was actually pretty crazy. It happened very fast. Like, Jim got interested in the book, and then, like, everyone in Hollywood wanted to see what this book was all about. So, like, they're, like, you know, because, like, like, it's all, like, it's all just fucking, like, buzz. You know what I mean? It's all, I mean, it's all bullshit. It just is a, it's a, it's a culture that runs on, like, buzz and, and, like, the new hot thing. So, all of a sudden, my book became, like, the new hot project of, like, gay CP book coming out soon, blah, blah, blah. So then I just, like, met with a lot of, like, studios and a lot of, um, you know, um, production companies. And, like, you know, we had, like, a couple offers from people. So it was, like, a bidding war, which was, like, chic. But the whole thing happened, like, I would say, like, in the span of, like, a month. It was very quick. And then we went with Jim, and then that was it. But um, I can't speak to, like, other experiences because it's, it's all different. But I feel like in Hollywood, things either take five days or five years. There's no in between. So, yeah. Uh, hey, Ryan. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask uh, what books uh, have fortified you uh, to, um, uh, to become a writer? And how did you feel at the very beginning of the process of the writing I'm Special and at the very end? Thank you. Um, Let's see. Okay, what was the first question again? I'm sorry. Like my memory is like Swiss cheese. Uh, what books have fortified you? Oh, to, books to, beco to become. Oh, a love. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So books. Okay. So like, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, hmm. That inspired. Okay, Cookie Mueller. Do you guys know who she is? She's really good. I mean, she's dead now. R.I.P. She died of AIDS. But but she wrote like really funny essays and um, Fran Lebowitz um, has done some funny shit. And then she, like, never wrote again. I love Fran Lebowitz. She literally was like, I'm going to write some essays and then never again. I have writer's block for the last 20 years. You're like, must be nice, babe. Anyways. Um, and then Nora Ephron, for sure. Um, she's so fucking, I mean, RIP again. God, all these people are just dead. Anyway. Um, so, so, yeah. And so uh, that, that really inspired me. Um, just, like, the kind of conversational funny tone, which I think the book has. Like, I didn't want anything that felt like academic. I didn't want to use like big words. I just wanted to write how I talk, which is what I do anyway. And then the beginning of the book, I felt terrified because literally when you sell a book, you're like, yay. And then you're like, wait, I have to write a fucking book. Are you kidding me? What have I done? What have I done? And you're just like, uh, anyways. And then it was in the, pro it, was in the <laughs> it was in the beginning of writing about my CP, which like I had repressed a lot of memories. So a lot of it was just like me kind of digging up old ghosts in the past and whatnot. So the beginning was really terrifying, and then the end felt like such a relief because it took three years to write this book, which is like embarrassing because it's literally 50 pages long. <laughs> so basically, it took me like 10 pages a year, like literally, to write this. <laughs> I mean, it's so ashamed, literally so ashamed. But the thing is, like, I wrote this 
every day. I mean, I was always, I was either working at Thought Catalog or I was working on Awkward, so I was writing this always on the weekends. And I also had to figure out how to write a book, which was really difficult for me for some reason. And so, you know, anyway, by the end of the, by the, end of the process, I felt like I was in disbelief that I actually finished the fucking thing because there was many times where I thought I was going to give up and just be like, not my journey. Anyways, here's the advance back, Simon & Schuster. Just kidding, I already spent it on acne boots. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I just felt like a, a, a sense of accomplishment. It was definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. It's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's, it was, I would never write a book again, actually. Take, take back book two. There's no book two, honey. <laughs> This is it. So you better read it and savor it because there's nothing left. <laughs> uh, hi. I'm back here. Oh, hi, honey. Hi. What's up? So I've always wanted to write a book, and I was just wondering how you recommend getting started and just, like, you said it took you five years. How did you keep yourself going even when you wanted to give up? Um, okay, well, the way, the way that my book happened, I, I feel bad. I mean, it's like, I, I, when I wrote for Thought Catalog, I had written like a lot of viral pieces, and so a lot of book agents were interested in me writing a book. And then I just went with the one that soothed me the most and I felt a connection with. And uh, then we wrote the proposal, and then we went out with it. It was very like, it was kind of easy. It was just like a very like one, two, three kind of process. And then in, uh, in the moments that I wanted to give up, I think the shame of literally getting a book deal and then just not <laughs> writing the book I mean, that is so fucking embarrassing. Like, really, though. We talked about that. Yeah, no, literally, this shit, because people do that, by the way. You yeah. read that post on Gawker of, like, people who literally got book deals and then just never wrote the books. And you're like, how do you live with yourself? Like, I mean, literally, like, I would be, I would be so embarrassed. I would literally walk down Prince Street with a paper bag over my head. Um, so I just knew that I had to deliver something. And also, I had worked so hard on it that to walk away from it was just, like, would be insane. But there was just, there were a lot of moments because it was such a, I felt like such an idiot while writing this book, and I just felt like I was never going to get it. it. It was hard. I, 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 you know, yeah, the fear of, of embarrassment and shame kept me going, <laughs> which is a powerful tool, I think. Oh, yeah. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for coming. Um, I was just wondering, what are some of the challenges of living with cerebral palsy on a daily basis? Like, you know, how does it manifest itself in your daily life? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, um, it's so funny because I've had it my whole life. So when, when things are like, when I'm being dumb, I'm like, okay, is that cerebral palsy problems or is that just Ryan problems? Where did, where did one end and one begin? You know what I mean, honey? Like, what came first, the chicken or the gimp? Um, so, you know, but like even yesterday, like at, the, like at my hotel room, um, I was like having trouble putting the blinds up and they just kept falling back down. Like they just kept, and I didn't know how to make them stay. <laughs> I don't know how to do that either. Do you know how to do it? And I literally was like, and I, it was just so embarrassing because literally it was like this. It was like me just like, taking them up and then being like crashing back down. And then me going Doo -doo -doo, and then crashing back down. And I'm like, okay, this is like brain damage. You know what I mean? Like this is like, this can't be real. And as you know, I did, well, I, I ran into oncoming traffic, which is definitely like brain damage problems. Um, I don't think people just do that for fun. Uh, and so I, I can't tie my shoes. Uh, that's why I wear these disgusting, dirty guys. And then um, I can't uh, handwrite. Uh, so if you, want me to, if you want me to sign your book, I can, but it's going to get real weird. <laughs> um, and uh, I, you know, it's so funny. Like, I, I, can, ma I can mask so many of my shortcomings like my, my mental shortcomings and kind of write it off as like ditzy or like being like a brat when really it's like I can't just kidding I really can't do that I could never say that but it comes off as me being like lazy and like a princess like Paris and Nicole in the simple life you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like no really I'm just retarded <laughs> um, so those are just a few of the fun flirty things I deal with on a daily basis yeah is that Cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Well, cool. thank you, Ryan. This well, yeah. is great. Thank, well, thank you, guys you guys for, so coming, for coming and for your awesome oh, my questions. God. Where'd they get um, you guys? <laughs> I, I, I imagine AOL just has a net that they go to NYU and they just capture you guys and you're like, you're blindfolded, taken here, and they're like, what am I doing here? Uh, <laughs> Got to catch them all. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much.